What it do, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. This is already cancelled. Key and Yaz of Nisha Hills Podcast Studio. How are we feeling? Yeah. Feeling good. I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, <laughs> excellent. Today, we're going to be doing a sense check, catching up on our lives, seeing where we're at in life. So we'll get to that soon. Uh, we're going to touch on TikTok being banned of Nisha I'm as upset. well. I'm upset. I know you're upset about this. <laughs> and I know Yaz is as well because... You've got a lot of audience in, in, in the States on your TikToks. My, follow, right. my following is like 60% US. Mm. Might as well shut mm. it down if they ban it over there. <laughs> no. Maybe. Yeah. And um, my daughter Lila uh, received a trophy over the weekend on, the, on Friday for her athletics. And I'm a proud father. So I'll explain a little bit about that. Um, might be triggering for you, uh, the discussion we have in order for that too, though. For who? Oh, for who? Whoever's listening. Why oh. would that be triggering? Why would be triggered? Well, because Yaz has something to say about participation trophies. Oh, is that the trophy? Ha, ha, ha. I've got a couple good on things. Her. Good on her. For what? For participating? Yeah. Good we'll on. get to that conversation <laughs> soon. But right now, it's already cancelled. Like, share, subscribe, get a part of the journey as we become the biggest podcast in the country. In the world. And then the world. Mm. <laughs> We're, the coming for, We're coming for you, Rogan. We're coming for you. Mars. We're going to drop a Grogan on Rogan. We're coming for you, Milky Way. There we go. All right, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hit the intro. Already cancelled. Already cancelled. Okay, how are we feeling? Guys, uh, I, 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 just, I just wanted to take some time just to check in with everyone. I mean, it's, it's good for us to, you know, reset, explain where our lives are at at the moment. Be open, be honest, um, and and just so you listening or watching on YouTube, um, get to know us a little bit more. We always, we cover a lot of trending topics. We cover we do a lot of comedy stuff, um, and not very often do we open up to our mental states and our emotional states. And I think it's time to just touch base a little bit here and there. Hmm. If you've just first listened or joined the show, I'm Kian. Um, I sort of hold the pieces together on the show uh yes okay. <laughs> yes no let me explain weird yes. no, I do, no worries i kind of anchor in i hold it together sort of thing because these guys are just wild and they're like the, sh- the they're the stars right the, yes, oh, the stars. Oh, that's how you say it okay. yeah. so. yes yes lifts so i hold the show yes lifts the show he's fun he's dangerous and he's marketable <laughs> he's marketable <laughs> And of Nisha, she demands the show. She's brave, she's fearless, and she used to do boxing. So I did. We just listened to her. Yeah. Uh, but that's sort of the, 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 the how we are. <laughs> the who dynamic. We are. Uh, Is this episode one? What's going on? No, but it's a reset, right? Like, it just, just to let people know what we are, what we do, how things work. I thought here. this was Did a we? sense check. Like, I you know, swear. how are things going in your life? Yeah, like, we're going to get to that. Doing? But I just, just in case you just first joined us or you maybe forgot, that's, that's sort of the gist here. Um, but okay. yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll open up. I'm back at the gym. Um, oh, good. I've been going four times a week for the last two weeks. I'm reconnecting with my body. I'm uh, training weights. I'm doing kickboxing, kung fu kicks and boxing punches. Uh, and I'm meditating regularly. I'm actually excited about re- meditating because I actually want to go and learn how to be a meditation teacher. What? Are you yes, serious? I actually want to do that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is amazing. Mm. I'm actually so happy for you. Yeah. Okay, so just a little bit of context. context. Like we've been working with each other for like, Two years now? Yeah. Come, coming close to it. Yeah. A year and a half, yeah. A year and a half. Ever since I met Kian, he has always, like, literally day dot, always talked about meditation. Yeah. Like, his practices of meditation, the things he listens to, like, suggesting things that you can implement to, like, really kind of get into a really good mental space. He's all about that. The biggest advocate. And the fact that you're going to learn to become a teacher. Yeah. It like makes sense. Yeah, it does, right? That is it's really so, cool. It's so weird. It just hit me over the weekend and I was like, because I was at the gym, I was meditating and someone, I remember I told you the PT came up to me and goes, oh, I want to sit down with you. Oh, and yeah. then that just said in my mind like, oh, okay, people want to sit down with me while I do it or one person does. <laughs> and I thought, okay, well, why not look at courses this is, this and is, yeah. like that? This is key and explained to a T. What? One little thing will get planted in his brain. <laughs> like literally one person came up to him and said, Hey, I'd love to meditate with you. Yeah, and Ken's yeah. like, I could be a meditation teacher. <laughs> I will meditate so for now, the world. and you know what's crazy? The guy is so organi- organized and determined that yeah. I promise you, give him one month, he'll have a class of 30. Oh, 100%. No, th- I already like- have the strategy built out. <laughs> I already know how much I'm going to make. I know I know everything on it, but I don't want to, I'm not trying to monetize such a beautiful experience. Yes, but, you are. But it's all, 
Okay, but it's Be also, honest. but it's also about actually trying to do things that's good for for people's mental yeah. states. So I'm I'm happy. But about also that. good for you because you'd be practicing it every day. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. Like you get to share that with people. I oh my god, that's like that's really cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for you. Man. But you know, you don't even have to have a certificate to do to teach meditation. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. So I've been doing it for twelve years. So I don't really need a certificate to do it, but it's like good to have it for like insurances and stuff like that. But no. insurance, insurance, whatever. Like you can just <laughs> nah, but I, if I was going to go to someone, I'd want them to have a certificate. What the hell are you going to have insurance for? Oh, I'm so I'm so sorry. Your husband came to meditate and he hasn't been able to break the meditation. Yeah. He's going to be like this for the rest of his life. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. But I think it's What's just like any type of holistic style practice. Yeah, but like if have. you go to someone for help, right? Like like you actually pay for a class, and yeah. there's someone who has like some some sort of accreditation, and then there's someone over there who doesn't. They're like. I've been doing it all my life. Who are you like n- bound to go to? Like, I'd be more inclined to <coughs> go to someone who has accreditation. Let me let me let me tell you about accreditation real quick, just so you guys understand how this works in the world, right? right. Who's the highest paid actor on the planet? Was it The Rock at one time? It I is. Think it was yeah. Dwayne right Johnson is still the highest paid oh, actor. Is he? Yeah. Wow. He's he's never done one acting class. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, like, no accreditation. Yeah, but yeah, but Zero. This no, is a health thing. This no, is a health thing, right? This is a health... Like you're going so it's for... Oh, yeah, it's exactly. a profession. We're talking about the profession, right? Nisha was saying, I'd rather go yeah, to someone yeah, with yeah. accreditation. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that's different because like when someone's seeking help from another person, mm. that's a whole different <coughs> thing, I think. See, I've, I've looked at the course, 12 weeks. You reckon two oh, two 12 hours weeks. a week. That's, that's short. Yeah. Do you think you could help anyone meditate? 100%. Myself? 100%. I doubt it. I already explained to you before. I reckon I could do I reckon we could work on it. I don't think you can. Cuz it's just it's just it's literally like doing a push up. As if you know how to do a push up, you know how to meditate. But what if that what if that push up involves having like a thousand bricks on your back? It's just impossible to do. That's where I'm at. It would be impossible mm. for me to meditate but because maybe, because of how my brain functions. Yeah. But maybe it's like I'm assuming and I don't know cuz I don't <coughs> meditate, but I'm assuming similar to like uh when you, you get, like, for example, my mom, she's mm. older now and going to the gym is hard for her in terms of, like, doing certain exercises. Mm. So she's actually found a gym that's an alternate gym, right? So maybe it's, an, like, alternate forms of meditation that you can start with mm. to then Yeah, get there's, into there's so many different types. Yeah. There's breath work, there's body scanning, there's um, mindfulness. There's just a lot of different types of it. So keep, <laughs> uh, keep in this. What is it? Watch this space. Watch this space. Yeah, nice. Yeah. What's the key? What are you trying to achieve from meditation? Is there a final goal with meditation? Is it um, clear of the mind? It's, yeah, it's, it's clear and cleanse of the mind, but it's also, um, it's also connecting with your body. Mm. Can you sit there and turn your brain off meditating? Like literally turn it off? There's no thought? Uh, if you do it enough and, you've, and you practice the strategy enough, yes. And but but the mind will still go and think about something, mm. and the mind will still do that because that's what the mind does. But it allows you to step out outside the mind and observe. So when you meditate, you just become the witness. You become the observer. Mm. Okay, but we can touch on that in another. That another is time. so fascinating. I just I just don't think it'll work for me. I just, oh, hi guys, I'm Yaz. Is that what we're doing today? <laughs> we're doing that. Hi guys, I'm Yaz. Self-diagnosed with ADHD. Uh, soon to be. Medically diagnosed by ADHD. Tell us about the ADHD. Yeah. How's your life going? What are you moving through now? What's going on? Oh, it's. I've come to the conclusion that I, I need to do something about this. Yeah. And I know I've been saying this for a long time and I keep putting it off. And I don't know if I'm putting it off because I'm scared to no. actually go and, and someone saying to me, yep, you have this. Not not a problem, but you you are now diagnosed with attention Why deficit. Why does that scare you? Hyper, hyperactive disorder. I don't know because then there has to be change that needs to be made because it's right. at this point now where I feel like it is affecting my life. Yeah. Especially where we're in a position where what we do, this podcast, isn't a regular occurrence on a on a you know daily basis per week. Yeah. We 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 come in two three times a week and we record the podcast. Yes. Mm. Having the brain I have and how it functions with no um, uh, structure, no structure permanently it's hard to focus on different things and what needs to be done. Right. Like in one hour, and, and, I, and this happened to me yesterday, in one hour I worked on four different things. And that is so bad to do when you're trying to achieve a goal. Yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah. what meditation would actually help with. Now, if obviously you, you believe at the moment that it's something that you can't, that you won't be able to do. Mm. But it, it, the biggest thing about meditation gives you is focus. That's the ultimate skill that meditation gives you, is focus. Yeah, because it's like, it's about... Uh, remove it all. You, ha- you have thoughts all the time, but being able to, I guess, let the thought come and then just go, as yeah. opposed to like 
now having a new thought and now all of a sudden you're doing a whole new task. You're yeah. thinking thoughts as trains and everyone just jumps on that. You just jump yeah. on the thought train, jump on that thought train, jump on that thought train and then you're like, shit, the train's off the edge and you like panic and whereas what 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 uh, that act this exercise might do and might help is it actually allows you to know, oh, well, there's a train gone past but I'm just sitting at the platform chilling. Yeah, okay. So uh, let me explain to you what I want to achieve, hopefully this year, right? Mm-hmm. Is be in the moment Focus on the moment and think about that moment. Mm. Like, yeah. for example, us here at the podcast. I would love to come and sit down with you guys and only think about the podcast and what we're talking about while we're sitting here for this hour or whatever it is. Right, and be but present. And be present. And that's, yeah. not what, that's not how my brain is. Right now, as I'm talking to you guys You're having and you guys are talking back, <laughs> yeah. I'm not having one other conversation in my head. Wow. I'm having three or four conversations with myself in my head about everything and anything in my life right now. Really? And you dwell on it. And yeah. you constantly dwell and it's like, you want it to stop. Like at yeah. some point, I actually feel like a crazy person. Right, I was right. telling Keen off the air, um, like last night I slept at like 5 a.m. It's because I had other work to do. But I fall asleep and I'm thinking about something that needs to be done, whether it be today, yep. tomorrow, next week, maybe a bill, whatever it is. And as I'm sleeping and dreaming, even if I'm dreaming about whatever it is, uh, making a coffee out of uh, tree syrup, whatever the coffee <laughs> might be, right? Right. Oh, sorry, whatever the dream might be. In that dream, I'm thinking about real life situations because my brain actually doesn't turn off even when I'm asleep. Yeah, wow. Mm. Okay. I'll wake, I'll sleep and wake up thinking about the same topic, and it's so annoying and stressful. I mean, even though the yeah. world, the two worlds are always connected, the dreaming world and the <coughs> dreaming state and reality state, they're always connected in some shape or form. Mm. But when it's a point where you're still like anxiously running, anxiously thinking about your life situation While in I'm your dreams. Sleep, yeah. Well, that means that you're not also probably really sleeping. I'm not. You're I'm like, not. you're probably still in, you're not going into REM sleep. I don't get into REM sleep. You're ever. just still a surface level sleep. Because a lot of the time when you're in REM sleep, you don't actually dream. Like it, it's, it, it's, it's dead. It's, it's like yeah. you, you're, but if your mind is active, you're, you're not in the full you're basically surface level sleeping essentially. So, that's, yeah. so when is the last time you've like properly slept? So I got, we're going back a very long time here. I got tested for my sleep because I was like very severe insomnia. Right. And they reported back and I don't have the reports here in front of me. So I'm regurgitating from what I remember them saying was I do hit REM sleep, right. but like once or twice a week. Oh, so when okay. I catch up on that sleep, so when I when my body physically shuts down, it's exhausted. It yeah, just, is when yeah, I hit okay. that stage. Besides that, I'm having four hours sleep every single night. If a Jeez. fly enters my room, I know the fly has entered my room. Yeah. That's how aware I am of so your surroundings. Of my surroundings. Yeah, okay. And I just wanted to stop. And I've been doing research on um, testimonials for people that have been diagnosed with ADHD later in life. So mm. around my age, thirty years old. And they all say the same thing and it blows my mind and I'm, and I'm, I'm scared to actually experience it. Mm. So the first day they take that pill. What's the pill? Um, there's, there's different ranges okay. that you can get depending on, you know, not what type of ADHD, but what you kind of need for your life. Yeah. Um, and they all say the same thing. It's like they'll, they'll take the pill in the morning and then within 30 minutes to an hour when it kicks in, they hear silence in their head really? and it's the first time that they've heard silence their entire life wow. in their brain. So it's kind of like they'll say something in their head and it'll just echo. It won't actually connect to another thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And nine out of ten times on these testimonials that I've watched from different people, they say that's the moment they break down and they oh, realise that that's yeah. how life is meant to be. Just To an extent. To, yeah. To an extent, to an extent but they're but like, this is how a normal person lives their life. Yeah, yeah. They can actually focus on one thing and one thing only and yeah. talk to themselves so, and come up with solutions and whatever it is yeah. without any other interruption. Having that focus. But <clears throat> is it uh, a pill a day you're looking at for the rest yeah. of your life? Yeah. You take it first thing in the morning. Is it As soon effects? as you wake up. There are. Um, oh, always, always. There's always side effects. Yeah. But from the research I've done on certain... Um, pills, like Certain pills and... and yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, the side effects are mostly daily. There's no long-term side effects. If okay. anything, it actually says it's better for your mental health long-term. Yeah, that's good. Um, and brain function- functionality. Um, but they say you forget to drink water. Okay. And it can keep you up at night, especially if yeah. you have already you have sleeping problems. Well, what's this from oh, kidshealth.org really? says uh, loss of appetite and trouble sleeping is common side effects. Mm-hmm. Um, other side effects incu- include jitter- jitter- jitteriness. Yep. 
um, irritability, moodiness, headaches, stomach aches, fa- fast heart rate, and high blood pressure. Well, so that's not good so if you don't sleep well already. That's yeah, it's not. But that's why you're meant to take it. So I've, in the morning. I've done so much research. Someone like me um, mm. who wakes up groggy because yeah. I never hit that proper sleep, right? They say set your alarm about 30 minutes to an hour before you actually wake up. So you wake up, take the pill, go back to sleep. Okay. By the time it kicks in, you're wide it awake. Cleared. Yeah. Um, but it needs to be in the morning. If you forget and take it at midday, you'll stay up till 4 a.m. Mm. Yeah. So well, it'll be interesting yeah. to see when you actually do go and get it, if there's something you do, because it, it can be confronting. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I just want to experience it. I feel like, uh, like looking back, looking back at like school, mm. it makes so much sense. Yeah. Mm. yeah I wish yeah. I knew that there was this thing called ADHD and I probably have it. It would have changed everything. Yeah. Yeah, but also yeah. it's also at the same time, it could be misdiagnosed as well. Of course. So that's something to be aware of. Yeah. yeah. Fun fact, mis- most misdiagnosed um, thing in the world is asthma. Asthma? What? Yeah, I, f- I found that out over the weekend as well. <coughs> How do you misdiagnose that? Um, any trouble breathing or oh, asthma? Right. This comes back to the topic of why I hate GPs. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. G- <laughs> to be fair, I've, I've had a really good fair share of GPs that have been really good with diagnosing me and whatever. But yeah, some GPs... But oh. and sometimes it, it, sometimes it could be like something that you're going to suffer with for the rest of your life, and yeah. the GP will come and say, "Oh, well, unfortunately, there's no cure, or unfortunately, there's nothing we can do. This is how it has to be." And yeah. I heard it. I heard it on the Joe Rogan podcast. I forgot who he was talking to, but his guest had um, his his her the guy's child had autism. Um, she was on the spectrum, and when she hit about 15, 16 years old, she started getting this tick, right. and the tick was like she'd hit herself. And she can't stop. She can't stop doing okay. it. And she'd apologize for doing it or whatever. And they're like, we need to fix this. He went to a doctor. The doctor said, unfortunately, there's no cure for it. You're just going to have to deal with it and, and, and find a way to manage it, manage it mm. and live with it. Right. Well, and he's like, well, that can't be right. So then yeah. he went to another doctor who said the same thing. Went to another doctor, the third doctor, no medication, no nothing. Don't know what this doctor did. Yeah. But the tick stopped. So... Yeah, they just come to conclusions. You know yeah. your body more than anyone else. Hundred percent. hundred percent. All right. Well, that's interesting, guys. We'll, so we'll yeah. follow along that journey as well. And Nishi, what about your life, mate? What's cra- what's cracking? Uh, what's going on? Well, you know what? I think the, the, the most exciting thing um, is that I feel like the last like I've I've always been making content for the last like I want to say five, oh, less nearly five years, right? Yeah. But like I've done a lot of comedy stuff, and I feel like. I kind of like not <coughs> like fell out of love with it because I, I love being creative. But I think I was just, oh my gosh, my mic just <laughs> attacked me. Is your mic trying to say something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I kind of stopped making as much content, I want to say, when I first started radio and because mm. we were just so busy. Of like, course. There's yeah. just no way. But then I just didn't want to make any more content. Like I, 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 I was still creative making songs, but I just felt like I just wasn't inspired. Yeah. I didn't want to make stuff. And so then I just dropped a significant amount of content that I was putting out weekly. And yeah. and then that's kind of scary because that's also like what I do it's for your career. a living. Yeah. yeah, and I built up so much. Like I, I built a pretty decent platform, but then I just, I just wasn't passionate about it. And then I feel like in the last few weeks, I've kind of rekindled that, joy of yeah. script writing and making content so i've been really just focused around that of, of like one script writing one you know making songs again like really focused on making music and then just being creative and not putting any pressure on it mm. and i think that has been really exciting for me because now I, like i just filmed something not too long ago and i've been thinking about editing it and i'm like you know it's just it's fun and yeah. i haven't had that feeling of like when it comes to you know making videos in what feels like a long time. So, yeah. Okay, that's been, interesting. That's been kind of cool. You, I mean, <laughs> you've, you've, you've um, like, we've, I've seen some of your script writing stuff, which is excellent. You've had, like, for TV shows and, and, and you, uh, were you writing a movie at one point as well? Yeah, I, w- I, w- I, I wanted to write a TV show and, like, I, it's funny, the story goes basically that she I wanted. out the script? <laughs> it's, it's right <laughs> so here. So, uh, this is the pilot script. No, I, well, I actually did a pilot script yeah. though, funny enough, and I didn't know how to write a script. So I, for half a year, I went on to YouTube tutorials of just like trying to learn and understand, learn something about a production Bible. Then I started reading the book, Save the Cat. Anyone who's interested in, you know, doing this stuff and like writing scripts and all of that, Save the Cat's a really good book. So I read that. What a weird title. Yeah, Save the Cat. Uh, yeah, I don't why? Know. Does, is there any reason why it's called Save the Cat? 
Yeah, there was. I don't recall why, but it's why in the say, book. Cats got nine lives, don't they? I don't think that's scientific, but yeah, we've heard that before. Yeah. yeah. Cats have nine lives. <laughs> it's called Save the Cat, but it was a really good book. I started a script. Oh my gosh, this is my we got to fix that. Uh, I started script writing. I did the production Bible. I did all of that. Anyway, I went to show it to the person who was helping me with all of it. And he <laughs> was like, it's not strong enough. Yeah. Uh, but he was like, it's a really good start. And so from there, I've kind of just tried yeah. to develop that skill. Because my dream is, this is my dream, to have this one series that I've been thinking about uh, pitched to like a streaming service and have it actually I have an idea. Happen. I have an idea. What's your idea? <laughs> Get the script locked in. Yeah. We read the script, no. the pilot oh episode, God, on a s- podcast <laughs> episode, <laughs> filmed, and send that with all the down. Everyone, everyone in our, every single one of our followers on social media, we'll get them on our on our side to go and listen to that specific that specific episode to hear the script. We send that oh then. Oh my gosh! No We way. send that then to whatever streaming service we want, yeah, Netflix, <laughs> Stan, whatever, and say, look. 250,000 people are begging for this to be made. Have viewed this. This needs to be made. <laughs> Boom. What's the... Uh, yeah. what? <laughs> Oi, like they will <laughs> sign off on that no within way. one second. What's no, but like they'd also want to be like, okay, one logistics, like the production Bible, like they would, they'd want all of the pitch documents and elements of like... Yeah, how do all that on the side, but then we perform it here on this <laughs> show. Have you got a have you got a blurb of the uh of the show? What's it about? What's oh, actually, I probably do. I mean, like, I have to find it now, guys. I'm on the like. I feel like I'm being stitched up. No, here. I'm actually curious now. Um, Look, I'm going to tell you what I think it's about. Okay, okay. I'm going to tell you because I I feel like I know Avnisha quite well. Okay, <clears throat> it's going to be culturally related. Yep. To a, to a certain point of view, not the not the actual premise of the show itself, but yeah. it's going to yeah. be influenced, culturally influenced. It's going to be a comedy. Ah. Uh, yeah, yes. It, there is there is definitely comedy elements in it. Comedic elements, yep. Yeah, co- it's comedic. Oh, yeah, comedic. I bet you <laughs> it, it better not be, it better not fucking be a TikTok star turning into a music artist. I swear no, to No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to find the production Bible. Um, I have the pilot, the actual oh, pilot. It's a it's full pilot what's, the, what's the episode called? Uh, it's called Truth or Dare. And what's the show called? Oh, I don't want to give it away now. Why? Like I feel like it's, because I feel like it's gonna actually jazz, work out. It is. One day. It is gonna work out one day. What we mean re- you speak it into existence. Okay, it's called extraordinary, right? So extraordinary, mm. but it's extraordinary. Shut up! Let me. Not that funny. Didn't need to explain that. Okay, right, it's right. called extraordinary. So extraordinary. But no, no, I know, it's, but hyphenated. It, but it's, it's hyphenated. It's hyphenated. It's hyphenated. It's hyphenated. I, it's hyphenated. It. I love it already. Because the idea. Oh my god, I know what it is. <laughs> no, you don't. Is it someone who works as an extra on a film and then they get signed to a big movie? And no, no, oh. no, no. It's actually think, think like Stranger Things with uh, Never Have I Ever that TV show with like so. Okay, it's it's. These ethnic kids, right? So, the, by the, the way, the main sell it to us like you're selling it oh, to Netflix. Oh, but now I need to get, and I'm really nervous. Sell it to know. us <laughs> like you're selling it to Netflix. Come on. Hold on, I'm going to find the production by because I have the whole thing. Oh, here it is. Oh, I got it. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> so, this is the um, log line. The hell is a log line? Oh, so that's like basically your elevator. That's where you pitch. put in the toilet. <laughs> so, the log. <laughs> Line. Yep. Okay, go A group of ordinary kids unexpectedly find themselves with superpowers. And now, not only do they need to navigate the complexities of high school, but also figure out a way to save the world. But the, the, the I guess the, the crux here is that these kids are like these first generation kids here, like myself, mm-hmm. like, you know, and your parents, like you've got one, um, the, the main protagonist who is Indian. Um, she's Punjabi. Punjabi girl with a Punjabi family and you see that dynamic and then you've got one friend who's from Hong Kong and you you see like the dynamic with her family. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the guys is South African. One's, so you got like... Do you have a Jordanian in there? Is there <laughs> no, a Jordanian? No, oh, no. fuck you. <laughs> no, well, I wrote this like... <laughs> I made it. I made it. <laughs> so this is the synopsis. <laughs> okay. So, oh God, I'm giving the whole thing away. Here we go. No, you don't have to, but... Okay. Just say trademark before you say it. Trademark. 
Cool. Does that work? I don't know. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> okay. So after a group of high school students discover a magic ball that's been hidden away for centuries in their hometown, <laughs> this, is based, this is meant to be based in Sydney, so in Parramatta, uh, a dangerous thunderstorm takes over Sydney. Lightning strikes the magic ball, unleashing energy that hits. Oh. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Are you laughing? I'll tell you after. I don't want to read this any longer. No, no, continue. I'm going to tell you after. I'm going to tell Lightning you after. strikes the magic ball, unleashing energy that hits all six kids. Little do they know they've all been gifted with a superpower. Whether they like it or not, now not only must they navigate the complexities of yeah, high school, but also ensure the magic ball doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Gotcha. Right? What? <laughs> Do you want to continue? No. Are you sure? Yes, that's basically like it's a very right. short. Synopsis. So I'm gonna tell just you something. Just before you, just before you do anything, yeah, yeah. you have a pen on your chest. Oh, yeah, uh, you do, do I like a big yeah, pen? Like happened, yeah. So on your right side, just lick your finger, uh-huh. and then that, nah, no, you're right. That's your left. Oh. Oh, now it's. Oh, it's getting worse. Off. Oh, oh no, it's going. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's got pen all over. Why is there pen all over me? And you know right. what? This is your freaking shit pen that you got from China that you always talk about is the best pen in the world. <laughs> Get it out of here. I don't want it. Okay. Sorry, that was really that aggressive. That's very aggressive. All right, well, is, there, is there a pen all over my no, face? No, 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 it's it's fine. Just keep on You're fine. You're fine. All right. So, Nish, I'll tell you why I was laughing. I wasn't trying to be disrespectful. Okay. But if you were to pitch this, yes. <laughs> you might get walked out of the room because there's a lawsuit on your hands. You've just described the show that exists. What? Is it is almost? It, can, I, can I say what it is? What is it? Misfits. Misfits. It's literally misfits. Your ex, like your synopsis. No, however, misfits is um, a bad naughty kids. Juveniles. Juveniles. That's yeah. What but juveniles. they're they're teenagers. Mm-hmm. They get um, cracker show. By they the way. they end up they're high schoolers. Yeah. But they get sent to like community service, and during community service, there's a massive storm. Oh, the storm. There's yeah. a storm, and then the storm hits, and then. I don't know what it hits. I don't know if there's a ball or something, but I don't remember that. I've watched no, it. Just, I think it's just in the storm they become. So the storm hits and then they all get given powers. Mm-hmm. And it's a great TV show, by the way. Okay. Amazing TV show. Fine. But it's it? literally almost identical no, 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 to what no, 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 no. Back but to the drawing board there, Nisha. <laughs> yeah, okay, most but definitely. But hold on. But, the, but, okay. but, those but is it in <laughs> Sydney? <laughs> but it's in Parramatta, no. But the logistics can change. Like like how it occurs of them getting superpowers. Yeah. That's an easy ride of Right, a fix. Yeah. But what I, the heart of the show, and this is basically why I'm really excited about it, is because you have these first generation kids who are here, which is a similar experience to yeah. what I've experienced growing up, and you have your foot into two different worlds, right? Mm-hmm. So already, that alone of like looking at like these five kids who are best friends and they've kind of become close because of their ethnic background, <coughs> their cultures, and you see like these kids who now have been given these superpowers, right? Yeah. But one, now they're superheroes. They have no idea how to be superheroes. They're terrible at it. Misfits. But they think they have to save the world. But you've got this dynamic with the parents yeah. and the families, yeah. which is like those like those ethnic uh, uh, cues that you have all written in the in the script, and like you know things that people can really relate to, like who have grown up first generation, yeah. and then also your high school like everyday teenager mm. problems. But I wanted to add that third element of like of you know coming from two different worlds because i think that's something that people would really like especially you know not only just australia all around the world really relate to no no of course 100 percent. yeah i feel like that like honest i'm I'm not trying to like shit on it i'm, I'm at watching all misfits. I'm gonna you watch have misfits. to watch it's, it's a yeah, i it's like such it. a sick movie it's such a sick show don't get yeah. me wrong it gets really shit in the last couple it of does seasons. I, I, I pulled out yeah i pulled yeah. out i stopped watching yeah um but the first couple of seasons like this is one of the best shows I've ever seen in my life. Mm. Really? Um, yeah. It was just written so well. But very similar to what you have, the only difference is, I think, is the cultural um, yeah. interpretation. Yeah. That's the only which difference. Is, which is the main thing. Like, I think superpowers... Oh, I feel like the superpowers <laughs> and them no. saving the world is probably the main thing. No, no, no. But like, yeah, but that's in so many... That's so in so yeah, many yeah, yeah. things. It's, that's just the theme, And yeah. also, these kids are not good... Are they, are they good with their superpowers? These misfit kids? They learn to use them because they don't yeah. know... They, they have yeah. no idea why they've got them. They don't understand what they have to do. Yeah. But they're super powers are so um what's the word i'm looking for here? it's not something that Specific. you yeah it's not something that you read in like a comic book it's not like okay. the superpowers are so strange right and i don't know it's a great show i I'll might watch rewatch it. it i might rewatch I'll it i'll watch it and see but um but anyway now that the idea is out there please no one steal my idea should we watch the trailer while we're here mm, i'll watch it later we'll watch that, that later. Nishi, uh thing i don't yeah. know yeah, what? I'm trying to find. I'm trying to generate different <laughs> ideas for you, but sorry, I can't help you. Listen, 
But if anything comes to mind to add to Nisha's show, please hit us up. So there you go. You've got three things to follow us along. You follow along my, my meditation journey. If you do meditation on stuff, hit us up and we can have conversations about it. Yaz with his ADHD journey. Yeah. Uh, that'd be interesting as well to know if there's people out there, Yaz, that can connect and have more information. Yeah, I, I'd, actually, I'd actually love for someone to DM me if they've gone through this later in life. Yeah, later in life. Like, yeah. uh, you know, obviously I feel like being diagnosed younger, you live with it. It's normal yeah. to you. But yeah. I just want to see that shock value of yeah. how your life changed one year in. What was the difference? I'm sure there's so many stories. So, <clears throat> like, you reach out, yeah. And I, if you I, have any stories to I share. I truly believe my ADHD is what has been blocking me from a- amazing success. Like, right. amazing. Yeah. Anyways. That's, uh, and then you can join me with my lawsuit, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so we updated on that. <laughs> All right. Well, let's touch base. Uh, look, we haven't got much time. We have we have spent a lot, but we've got about maybe 10, 15 minutes left. Oh, my gosh. Um, we talked about ourselves. For but you know no, what? But, no, good. I, I want to th- talk about myself once in yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah but I think it's good for, for us to connect with you, listeners. Yeah, uh, look, yeah, TikTok's been banned. Uh, not much more than that uh, over in the States. It's looking at to, to It has banned. been? It has? No, nah, it's pretty no, much... No, no. It's, it's, it's passed through levels of government. Um, so, and the it's House on of Representatives passed a bill on Wednesday. And this is like, well, Wednesday. I don't know which Wednesday now. But they, they passed it uh, to obviously wanting to ban it unless they sell it or something to yeah so they want them to sell it uh so let me go to what's actually happening here basically this is this is the problem it obviously like had a like a meteoric meteoric rise it was like super popular everyone was using it but then what happened was uh you the u.s like some of the lawmakers that got concerned that tiktok's china-based parent company could collect sensitive user data and censor content that goes against the Chinese government. And then they were scared that uh, basically they would share US user data with the Chinese government and they need to basically ensure that this doesn't happen. And the only way to do that is if they they sell the company to someone, um, basically this uh, bite dance is sold to someone else. In the States. Well, most, I don't know. Most likely. I don't know where. Someone that could get audited by the US government, I'm assuming. So how does this... Okay, so then... So all this is going on. Yeah. They want to sell it and the Senate and all this stuff over in America. How is it affecting Joe Blow in Australia, for example? Well, it's... it's okay, one, it wouldn't affect us because I think the Prime Minister came out just recently and said we're not going to be banning <laughs> TikTok. I'm pretty oh, sure that's that a, was... That's the first time we haven't followed America. But you, it does have a trickle effect. That's the problem. Yep. So, like, mm. you have so many creators now in Australia. And, like, you have so many people who access TikTok to promote whatever they're Businesses doing. Businesses as well. Businesses. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you love... If you've been thinking about it, like, about joining TikTok to promote, you know, your paintings or, like, whatever mm. you're interested in doing. If the US market is taken out... Because remember, India was taken out yeah. as well. It got banned in India. That was a huge market. Like, well, that's 1.1 billion yeah. people. Huge. And now US is also massive. Like my audience alone, I think I have like a really high US based yeah. audience. Mine's like 50 to 60%. Yeah. And t- like for that to go, obviously will have a domino effect to creators, to people like who are thinking about using it for business. It, it is like, it's unfortunate. I don't think it's going to be, you know, banned though. In like, general? Well, because this has happened before. It hasn't gone this far. I don't think it's ever gone through the um, the House of Representatives yeah. before. Like they've passed the bill. I'm not sure, but I don't think so. But there has been so many situations where they've tried to ban TikTok and it's yeah. been an ongoing conversation. Yeah. And it's always around the election cycle, I feel. It was Donald US. Trump last time, wasn't it? That came out with the, I want to ban TikTok. I think so. And I'm he gave sure. like a threat. He's like, we'll give you two weeks to blah, 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 or we're banning it and nothing happened. I don't happened. remember that. But yeah, like it has been before where they've, they've had that How discussion. How much, Nishi, from a um, creator point of view, Yeah. Uh, how do you feel that the rest of the world is making money on their views and uh, we're not here in Australia? Like the creator fund? The creator oh, fund. It's, it's, not even like, it's, it's not even just changed. the creator fund. So like, there was the creator fund, but now they've got this incentive on on. I don't know. I don't know what platform it is, or you have to get approved for it. Yeah. Sorry, it is on TikTok. I don't know if you have to get approved for it though, where they'll give you a thousand dollars US for every million views you get on TikTok. A thousand dollars. Yeah. So for every million. Wow, every million. Okay. We would be rich. Nietzsche. Ooh. And I'd actually be enticed to create content. Well, this is this is an interesting thing because uh, a lot of Australian creators, they feel that. 
Like yeah. y- you should see the comments they leave on like, you know, even when TikTok mentioned the ban or whatever, like the comments that people were leaving, I think it was like TikTok creators or something on Instagram. People were just like, you, you don't, you know, we feel like we're not taken care of. Of course Kind not. of thing. And so that'll be interesting to see. I think that it might change. Who knows? Who knows? It might change. They might bring something here for us. I like, hope they do. Yeah. Because like this is the future. The digital world is the future. Like I- even if, you know, you're working in some sort of company right now, a business and you're an employee, uh, I'm, I'm certain that that company is heavily utilizing social, social media, media yeah. Yeah. and it will just continue to grow. Yeah, and I always say like, I've, like one of my mates, her kid, want like love like obviously all kids want to jump onto social media and stuff and so she's helping her kid to learn to like edit and do that stuff and i'm like that's so smart learn that skill early on like yeah. how to be digitally savvy because it's literally what the future is going to look like like yeah but at the same time ai is just going to take the job anyway i mean it's really taking a lot of the jobs so you still I, think have it's to, more, you I think it's more about like no, uh, idea i like creating and being creative with those types of tools that you have. Yeah. So not just knowing how to edit, but it's like, well, how to then prompt to edit and then how to do like 15 of them at once. That's going to be the one that really takes yeah. over. It's that person that can have the AI be its employee rather than do what an AI can do. That's how I look yeah, at it. Yeah, but I, I think I'm speaking <coughs> more from like a creative lens. Creative like lens. if you're a creator, no AI can replace that. Like if you, if you, are, like you come up with the ideas, then like the world's your oyster. But and there's a lot of people that are like that, even in companies working, you know, as a staff mm. who are like giving those ideas and trying to like make change or like, you know, move the organization forward. Mm. You have that and you're digitally savvy, like, gosh. Yeah, you mm. got it in the back. Yeah. Um, but I think for anyone that's not a creator and that just sort of enjoys it, does a bit of doom scrolling, scrolling and all yeah. that stuff, I think, I think the, the only uh, information it brings to light is what exactly is recorded from you being online, what details you're passing along, the privacy stuff. That stuff does get recorded and it also gets utilized against you. Of course. Um, to target you for products and for other types of content that is very similar yeah. to what you actually engage with. So but that's like every having platform. It is, it is, it is. So just having the understanding, knowing that when you're on social media, that you are actually signing over your, depending on what the contract and the terms and the T's and C's say, you actually are giving that information away. So just to be aware of all that stuff, different pr- different platforms have different rules and regulations and stuff. So yeah. just keep that in mind when you're when you're going through your your daily scroll. Yeah. Remember remember one rule, and I love this one when I heard it. If the product is free, then you are the product. Exactly. <coughs> you are the product. You are Big how yeah. the, you time. are how the apps are making the money. Exactly. Um, all right, well, uh, yeah, TikTok, the banning stuff. We'll keep an eye on that and see how that goes. Um, over the weekend, my daughter Lila finally finished her first athletic season. It was a little athletics. That nice. She did. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, she's in the tiny tots. They call them tiny tots. As anyone that's under the age of five. How Which old? How old's the youngest that can uh, I think, join? I think. I think. Uh, four-ish. So she's she's she in the. Four, she can be. Old. It's like three three to five. Okay. But you know, it's just based on that. So she sits in the, she's a four, um, and yeah, it was it was it was such a beautiful moment because I saw my daughter get her first trophy. That's exciting. And it was such an exciting thing, and all the parents are crowded around. And we're at the stadium, and they do the presentation, and they do caught all a, the kids get trophies. All the kids got all the kids got a trophy, and there was a yeah. couple of like encouragement awards as well that got yeah. given out. Um, even the even the <coughs> child that didn't do anything and like. Yeah, everyone gets it. Didn't back. accomplish anything in the whole oh, year. But a lot on. of them did. Four. They did. I mean, they did. They did accomplish. They can run in a straight line. That's good. All right, what if, can, That's hypothetically, good. if they can't run in a straight line, if the job is to run in a straight line and they can't do that, they still get an award? They get an encouragement trophy. Most probably. Most what's, probably. Like, what's the point of awards? Because they'll feel left out. Let them feel left out. That's the real but world. But four. Like, okay, maybe make them feel left out when they're a little bit older. But well, like when they actually get to compete and they're doing their times and all that stuff, like like they get timed on their 100-meter sprint or whatever, yeah. then, yeah, if you if you didn't get the fastest time, you don't get the fastest award. The does award an, for the fastest. Does anyone get, like, a bigger trophy or are they all the same? All the same and then they just write different on the thing so hers was p- participation yes she, oh, she got a participation oh, that's all right that's all right what do you mean that's, that's all right that's that's it's it's great, yeah, great, it's great. And, but that's encouragement for her to keep on going exactly because when she started to where she is now there's a confidence build there's a there's the, all these different um like uh you know agility and space. speed and and she was she was quick man she's she smashed the competition well your daughter has mm. so much energy but hold on did mm. someone get first 
No, no one gets first. So, but did you say they write different things on there? Like so, like oh, participation, and I think there's an encouragement. I think that's the only thing. That's oh, it. Yeah, okay. There's only those two awards for the tiny tots. Well, I guess it's because okay. they're four years old. Yeah, but as you, four. I'm sorry, but as you get older, yeah, that shit needs to be cut out. Yeah, I, d- I do agree with that. Like once it's like you're right. Like I think I think if someone's won something, they should be recognized yes. for winning because the yes. you know I agree. However, like. See, I never really, I, d- I got participation ribbons. I never really won too many awards, but I actually have a cabinet <laughs> full of trophies. That's amazing. Yes. Not from, maybe two of them were from proper organizations um, for music. Yeah. Uh, which my dad, competitions we did together. Yeah. Um, but a lot of them were from my dad. So let me explain, right? So the first trophy I ever got was a plaque that said Melody Queen. Uh, of Nisha and my dad gave it to me because he wanted to encourage me to keep singing. And, That's you cute. Know. And then he o- opened an organization, right? The CMCA organization, Canberra Multicultural Artists Association, mm. like full committee and everything. And it was ticketed at events. And he basically did that so I could perform on stage. He set up the entire event. Why well, he we've had, heard this he, story before, haven't we? I think you have, and and so and then at these events he would give out awards, like he got like full trophies made, and I would get these trophies. <laughs> He'd get it, should get every single one. <laughs> no, but like Was everyone, that- everyone got one. But like you know, we were like sixteen, seventeen, and we're getting these awards, and then I like I started collecting them, like Infinity Stones. I have like all these, even though your dad paid for them. My dad paid for them, and I I took each one with pride. I love them; they're my prized possessions. But my favorite one is Melody Queen. Do you f- do you feel do you feel as if you earned like you earned them? That you feel like you did enough work to earn that? I'm probably not. Eh? <laughs> like put it this way, put it this way, and this is where the problem lies. Nishi could have done half the effort she did, and, yeah. still, half got the the, and still got the exact same trophy. Yes. That's where the problem. And this takes me back to when I was 15 years old, mm-hmm. and this actually still to this day annoys the shit out of me. Right. right. <clears throat> so, long story short, I'm playing footy. I'm playing Division One. I'm the highest point scorer for the entire club, for every single team. That's thousands of kids. I'm the highest <laughs> point scorer right. for the entire club. Go to our award ceremony. I'm like, I'm going to get the best <laughs> award here. I'm going to get the best award here. Yeah. They call out my name for one of the special awards. Like not the participation. I don't even think we yeah, had participation yeah. awards. And then they say, for most improved that's 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 a good award. That is not a good award. That's a good well, award. It recognizes no, the hard work you've put in. No, it means you you were shit and now you're all right. That's true. That's what and it means. You were highest... shit and now you're all right. So what? what's wrong with that? You were shit and now you're all right. Because nah, I was never shit. I was always amazing. <laughs> egotistical prick. But I was. Well, I'm so confused. If you were making like the highest point system, then then I don't get it. How do you think I felt? So. Wait a minute, how old are you? I was 15. 15 or 16, okay. I've got to remember. Yeah. But I had moved to the club the year before. Yeah. Um, and because I joined late, there was no trials. Yeah, so they yeah, put me yeah. in Division 3. Now, nothing against Division 3 <laughs> players. It's just not Division 1. But they're not... Like, they're there because they're forced to go there. They've actually right. got no skill. And it was a bit embarrassing. Like, I'd get the ball and every time I touch <laughs> the ball, I'm scoring a point. Yeah. I'm scoring a try. Like, they're not... I wasn't competing then, and I yeah. hated it. So that year, they actually put me up to Division Two, and it was a bit similar. It was obviously a little bit tougher, but I was outplaying everyone. Yeah. So the next year, I went into Division One. Great, enjoyed mm-hmm. myself, loved it. Highest point scorer. They put me in a position, by the way. I don't know if you understand footy, Ken. Um, I know you terrible. do. All right, I was a sixty-five kilo Arab kid. I was skinny. Okay. All right, my coach comes up to me and says, "You're going to be a prop," which is a front rower. Now, if you've ever played, if you've ever played footy or watched footy, the front rowers are the big boys. Right. They're the big Pacific Islanders who weigh 120 kilos when they're 15 years old. Yeah. Is that because they they just tackle people? Yeah, so they're the ones that's trying to push through they the defense. Through right. They're just right. running through okay. the defense. So he made they had this idea. I thought he was joking. He wasn't. Yeah, he had this idea. He's like it's going to work. Blah blah blah. Whatever. It worked. Okay. He put me as a prop. I was up against these massive uh, Pacific Islanders. These massive lebos, like meatheads. Meatheads. Yeah. And I was running rings around him and scoring points. So right. in my head. I'm like I am the MVP I will be the most valuable player And I will get the top award And I got most, most improved Who got MVP? So someone uh, else got MVP Oh do you actually want to know Who got MVP? Yeah who? The coach's son The coach's son <laughs> That sounds like a Nicky yeah. dad move <laughs> Yeah <laughs> It was yeah. I was shaking my head yeah, But then I was yeah. like oh. Uh, the coach's son She's the MVP Don't of get me wrong Music association <laughs> Don't get me wrong Great player But 
I know for a fact he should have got most improved because he was a rubbish at the beginning of the um. season and then he got better. So what did you do with the trophy? <clears throat> I took it home. <laughs> I've still got it. But, but look, it does sound like you improved. In the eyes of the club, you went from Division 3 to Division 1 and the highest point scorer, you improved. You were the most improved of everyone. He's the most improved. Thing. Nah, but uh, to I be say. fair, I will be pissed. If I was getting the best, I was a top player. And I don't know how true this story is, but if I was a top player, I would want to get the top award. I was actually, yeah, I was genuinely upset. Yeah. Sc- screw these uh, award systems and how they yeah, work. Look, I, I remember the award systems in schools. <clears throat> and, like, I wasn't good at school. Like, I was, I was, I was all right, but I wasn't great. But you know how they give like this award, like awards out at school? The merit, the merit, 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 merit awards. Merit awards, yeah. all that kind of stuff. I was so delusional that I would always think that they would call out my name. <laughs> even though I know You're like, one, one of these days. <laughs> one of these days. Because like, it looked like such a cool feeling. Like people would get up, they'd walk up towards the stage, everyone's... And I, I always thought that one day I would get an emer- like a merit award or something at school. Yeah. And never happened. But it's so funny because like, or someone like me, I can only speak about myself, I was a bit of a troublemaker at school. Yeah. So when I did get a merit award... Oh, you was, got one? Yeah, I got a couple. I think because I had to. Like, oh, this oh. kid's never got it before. You so have you have to give it... No, yeah. they didn't do that in my school. Well, I don't know why I got it. But every single time <laughs> I would get the award, the comment that would come from my teacher would be like a backhanded compliment oh. every single time. What did they say? Like, oh, for, you know, for... Uh, not speaking in class as much <laughs> as usual or some stupid shit like that. Yeah. That's what I'd get a merit award for. Ooh. Yeah. School. <laughs> Did Awards. you ever get an award? Kid? All the time. Really? All the time. Best and fairest. Best and fairest? Best and fairest always. Yeah, but see, even that, what the hell does that mean? What does that mean? I was uh, the best player and I was the fairest player. Oh my gosh. I, in I what sport? In soccer, football. <clears throat> I thought you were saying best and fairest, like <laughs> white. Oh, <laughs> what the hell, Ephesia? No, I know. That's, I was like, what is going on? Which school did you go to? Like, listen, m- uh, schooling when Keen was at school was fine. Maybe <laughs> in the eighties, that's what it meant. Mm. But uh, that just freaked me <clears throat> out. But best and fairest, okay. And yeah. what else? Oh, just heaps of good ones. He's googling awards right now. That's what he's doing. No, he's no, 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 no. I'm, I'm you, just sending an email uh, to Ephesia. Uh, yeah, all right, buddy. An Look at email. This. Yeah. I'm oh, can I get the email too? What the hell? Oh, yeah, I'll send it to you as Don't well. Don't leave me out of it. I thought I'd just uh, send this to you, Nishi. Oh, no, now I'm scared. Okay, hold on. Yeah, as you can have a look too. Thanks, mate. Just, you just said something and I thought, you know what? I'm going to make you feel better. Oh, my internet's not working. Hold on. Oh, I'm not getting anything. Is this his? <coughs> okay. Have you got it? No, not yet. I haven't got it. Let me airdrop it to you then. Oh, no, don't. Oh, no, we got it. Got it, Yaz? Yeah. Make sure you got it. I'm about to. I'm about to. I'm about to get into my emails. All right, here we go. Look at this. That's the subject line. All right, it's about to load. Come on. Oh. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> what have you used? You used use some sort of chat GPT thing. <laughs> I'm actually. Married and what for excellence? <laughs> You've got your I'm first merit award. This. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to award Evnesia for her excellence on this podcast with a merit award. Actually, I, I really Congratulations. appreciate that. Thank you. Now, what I'd love from you, Evnesia, is to zoom into that small text yeah. and, read, and read it out for us, please. Okay. For, na- for naming and using... Glenadog. Ignore that. That's just changing me <laughs> filling in the blanks. Uh, a speech? Speech at all? Uh, look, I'd like to thank, obviously, my co-hosts for presenting me with my first Merit Award. Uh, I actually think, wow, I'm a bit in shock, to be honest. Yeah. Not really emotional, but definitely in shock. Uh, I'm going to add this to my other... Uh, that is awards Awards that yep. I've received. Yeah. Yep. I mean, the two of them have been from proper associations. I'm going to consider this from a proper... The KYA the Association. The KYA Association. Uh, and yeah, it says, Ex-Gen at length be humor. So I'm assuming it's for something to do with humor. Yeah, yep. It's for being funny. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you guys. I, I appreciate that. Who uh, the hell spells excellence with three L's? Chat GBT. Uh, Dali. For, for excellence. That's the weirdest thing about AI <laughs> is that it still hasn't figured out spelling. But you know what? I can't do it all. It's about your name right, though. It for did. The, for the first time ever. Which is very surprising. Well, there you go. Nishi's first Merit Award handed out today. Congratulations. Thanks, uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll wrap it up on that, guys. But thanks for being <laughs> here. Uh, lots of exciting things to come. Lots of yeah. things are working on behind the scenes for you. 
and uh, I just we just can't wait to share it. So mm-hmm. make sure you uh, join our cancel squad on Instagram, the broadcast channel. Currently, one thousand two hundred and sixty-eight members. It's pretty good and climbing. Yeah. Uh, so get behind the scenes stuff there as well. But until next time, guys, uh, have a great day and enjoy the rest of it. And we will chat to you soon. Love you all. Bye. Take care. Already cancelled. <laughs> if you like the podcast, prove it. Like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to leave us a cheeky review.